Honourable Vice Chancellor, Honourable Faculty, and of course, Class of 2019. Congratulations. I have no idea why I'm standing here wearing green while all of you are wearing black. And, and, and the Honourable Vice Chancellor is the only one who's wearing a deep blue, which is a far more acceptable color than what I'm wearing. And I'm certain that I'm looking odd. But being odd and standing out has been a habit. <laughs> I must confess, this is the third time I'm wearing a robe. I always wanted to wear one when I couldn't pursue my studies properly a couple of decades back. So I still wanted to do my master's. And I sort of, you know, came to Dhaka University, and Professor Farhat did interview me, and I got into the MBA program, and I did not pursue it, because my children were crying at home and saying, Ma, purte jeona, on a gondogol hutse bishuvitaloi. So that was my kid, so I couldn't. So I went back. And then I chose literature. And after many, many years, I pursued my education and wore a robe and took the Presidential Gold Medal from, again, <laughs> the Vice Chancellor, and got a full on, I think I got a 3.99. <laughs> and, and that was in literature, that was in literature. And I was old, I was a mother of four. And then I wanted to do my PhD. So in spite of having corporate commitments, I pursued it. And I just got my doctorate last December. And, <laughs> and today, when somebody calls me Dr. Huck, I must confess I'm very vain and I'm very proud and I kind of never object. And if somebody drops it, you know, I kind of feel a little shy and I think I quietly remind them, you know, I have a PhD. So just to tell you all, education, is precious. So while the second valedictorian said that he had made the socially correct option, he had chosen the socially correct option, I would like you to remember that you have chosen the only option that will form you, frame you, and take you forward. So you have done the best that you could have. While I stand here today, a dear friend of mine is also in the audience, Iqbal Habib. He's an architect and a dear friend of mine for many years. And he was crying yesterday because of Buet. So I thought I would not be able to address you all without offering you an apology, a regret, and a tear. We stand together here, united, but in utmost grief as well, because we have failed you, children. It is on our shoulder that we have failed you, so forgive us. But life must go on, and we must claim the new tomorrow that you have in front of you. And don't shy away from that at all, because you must claim your space through creative reflection and not through unplanned disruption. In my life, I have five heroes. Two of my heroes are in heaven. One is my husband, another is my youngest son. Two are abroad, one's traveling, one lives abroad, and one is supposed to be picking me up from here because there's a lot of traffic. No matter where they are and what they do, these are the people who stitch me up every time I fall apart. So it's always your family that will stitch you whenever you need to be stitched up. Don't ever be alone. Don't ever let go of your parents' hands. Don't ever let go of your siblings' hands because your family is your core. And beyond that, there's nothing in life. 
I've often learned a lot from my heroes, my five heroes, and one of my heroes is my husband, the ex-mayor of Dhaka, Anisul Haq, who taught me that it was never too short a time to do things that we want to do. He was the mayor for only two and a half years, and yet he tried to turn things around. Remember, it is never, ever too short a time to do what you want to do, if you want to do it the right way, if you want to will it the right way. It's never too quick and it's never too brief. If we set our hearts to achieve what we want to achieve, you simply have to will and you simply have to lay your claim on your tomorrow. As for myself, I used to call myself a garment wala long ago. And today, while I stand in front of you, I don't want you to be an industry wala. Just because you have a degree in business does not mean that you will only do business. What this institution has taught you is routine. What this institution has taught you is excellence. So be loyal to that vision, to that path, and that perseverance and move on and do whatever you want to do in the best manner possible. We belong to an industry of 4.1 million workers. Yes, the industry does not give us a lot of profit now, but we still are responsible for 4.1 million people. This is one industry that has taken the country to the level it has taken. We have an unbeatable path of 8.13% GDP. We have an unbeatable path of 165 million people living in such a small space, as small as Wisconsin. And that's how we are. And we are still resilient. And we are just like Phoenix rising through the ashes every day. So pursue the path of being unbeaten. We need research in our area, we need a lot of support. So I was telling one of your professors, Professor Momen, the other day, that how do we get young people to get into BGME and help us with research? And he said, you know, give me 15 minutes. Let's get a lot of young people around. Maybe we can inspire. So that's one of the very devious reasons why I'm up here addressing you today. Because I'm trying to woo you into coming and helping us with our trade. I hope you will. As for myself, I was never meant for business. I wanted to be a journalist, and here I am. So, you see, I could have been a journalist, I could have been a teacher, but life rolls out different dices at you at different points. Never let go of any opportunity, whatever it may be. Whether it suits your purpose or it doesn't, it does not matter. Grab it, re-roll it, and throw it around. And life will come together for you. You will find your own existence. You will find your own entity. You just have to be patient with the dice roll and don't let go of it ever. That's what's happened to me. Different dices have come my way and I've stitched them together and I didn't let go of even one because I chose to evolve. Life does not give you many options, but whatever options you get, make use of them. Make optimum use of them. I want to make sure that you get my message across to you straight. I come from a very, very middle-class family. I literally used to teach kids when I was 16 years old because my father was retiring. If I could come up from there and represent the biggest sector in this country, so can you. You can be way, way bigger than we ever hoped to be ourselves. So you can do it. Just make sure while you are choosing your battles, be very picky. Don't pick every battle. Don't get into arguments. Don't waste time in being bitter. It's not worth it. Life is far too short. You need to embrace with empathy and move on. Because without empathy, we are nothing in today's world. But while you do all that, 
I want you to remember that all the channel swimmers have at one point or another have stepped on puddles, swam across ponds, dived deep inside and even have forgotten to take a breath or two and have cried. So don't despair. Embrace life when it unexpectedly strikes you hard. And when life looks unforgiving, remember that is the moment that you need to remind yourself that you were supposed to be a warrior. Battle it out and win. Being able to withstand the burden of life is the first and the best test of grit and conviction. So while the wild waves sweep you across your shores, stay calm and poised. And remember that even a storm should not be able to uproot you from your home. You know, when green turtles dive deep below and go to the bottom of the oceans, they even spend up to 20 years. And when it's time to hatch, they come back again to their place. There are birds who fly thousands of miles shedding weight. And when they want to mate, they come back home. So home is a space that you need to cling on to. Home is where you belong. So please belong. And then, when you step into the next turning of your life, like today, when there are no more cozy uh, escapes from tutorials, exams and everything, and when you step into challenges, remember that the special day has arrived. And this is not to overwhelm you. This is to wish you the very best so that you can take yourself to a level where you will only soar beyond the highest. Today, you step into your tomorrow, which will carry you through impossibilities that will shape you, frame you, and become your stick of courage. Dear graduating students of IBA, while I thank your esteemed institution for having given me the opportunity to communicate with you while you are all stepping into a very critical juncture in your life, I also take the privilege of sharing a few home truths with you. One is a very favorite saying of mine from Nietzsche, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Two, this too shall pass. No matter what happens, remember, this also will pass. And number three, very favorite line of mine from W.H. Auden, Spain, 1929. It says, history to the defeated may say alas, but cannot help or pardon. So learn from your yesterdays, rise from the ashes, and shoot for the unknown. Cross the limits of your own desires. Cherish your challenges. And when you find yourself trapped in Faustian dilemmas, remember, be careful of your desire. Don't let your desire be your epitaph. Your desire must not kill you, but choose being surprised by the unknown. Celebrate the unrecognizability of the unprecedented and be the surprise leading to a collision and an inventive disruption. Life is not to shy away from. Thus, address your dents and stitches over broken stitches. Each one of you are nothing short of the best that you can be. My heartfelt felicitations to the students of BBA, MBA, EMBA, and DBA for having stepped into the real world. But remember, especially because you are students of business, that human experiences cannot ever become free raw material for hidden commercial gains. Be aware. Remember, a rogue mutation of capitalism only concentrated around wealth is not life. That is what not you were taught in this institution. Remember that the real is as big as your perception and let not the doctrine of inevitability fool you into thinking that you cannot shape the world. You absolutely can shape the world and you already are. Congratulations once again, 2019, and I hope to see you again.